So next we're going to talk about how uh, we go about locating an unlocatable service. Uh, so potentially could be steel, very commonly with plastic services that have broken tracer wire or no tracer wire. Uh, we can't locate with a locator by itself because obviously we can't locate non-metallic pipe by itself. Um, but we have a tool uh, that will basically insert a tracer wire temporarily into the, the unlocatable pipe so that we can locate the tracer wire we're temporarily in, inserting into it. So I'm going to step you through the process of, of how we do that. So we've got a meter set here. You see we've already dismantled the, uh, the meter from the riser. Um, we've used a, a reducer, a couple of reducers to get from an um, inch and a quarter down to a three quarter inch stuffing box, which is what this fitting uh, up here is called, is, is a stuffing box. Um, that is what we're going to use to hold the pressure back. So we do this under a, a live uh, condition. Um, we're going to feed a tracer wire, technically a fiberglass rod with a tracer wire into it, through the stuffing box. Once we have everything <coughs> tightened down, we're going to open the, uh, the riser valve back up, and then we will snake the line. Once we've got the line snaked out, you're able to locate it just like you would a, a traditional uh, locate tracer wire. So, as you see, we've already got most of it installed. We've got our fiberglass rod with the tracer wire here, loosening the wing nut so that the rod will run out smoothly. We've got a cap for the stuffing box that we're going to slide over the rod. And we have a very heavy-duty O-ring. And then this is what's actually going to be used to hold the pressure back. Uh, this O-ring, when properly installed and tightened down, will hold up to 125 pounds of pressure. So it can be used on, on very high pressure service lines. So basically we're going to slide everything down onto it and up and out of the way. Feed the, the uh, traceable rod down through the stuffing box. And then there's just a couple of little screws that are going to hold it all in place. And bear with me while I tighten everything down here. Before you get too tight, you have to make sure you lubricate the rod. Comes, they all come with a package of, of lubricating wipes. One of the most valuable tools in this whole little setup is lubricating the rod. If the rod is not properly lubricated, it can't pass through the, uh, the stuffing box easily and ultimately you just end up breaking the, uh, the rod. So. Pull out a lubricating wipe. As you see, before the lubricant's on it, it's very hard to push that rod through. With your hands lubricate it. Once you've got it through lubricated, it, it'll move up and down very easily. So, rod's well lubricated. I'm going to tighten our stuffing box. We want to make sure we don't have any gas leaking through it. Once our stuffing box should be securely tight, we're going to open our valve. There we go. Obviously you need the valve open for the, the rod to be able to pass through. So, everything is pressurized. At that point, with the lubricant in your hand, you're just going to feed the rod down. All right, so once we're through, you're basically just going to feed this rod. You can get these traceable rods up to 300 feet long, and you just keep feeding it. You see the spool is just kind of spinning itself out there. And feed it out as far as you need to, essentially until you hit the main. It may also make a turn in the main. You, you know, you. Well, it won't make a turn in the main. It'll take any turns in the pipe, um, any sweeps in the pipe that you happen to encounter. It will not take a 90 in the pipe. So once you get to um, you know, a valve out in the street, um, it's not going to make that turn and go down into the main. It's going to stop at the end. You can feel it stop, which I'm feeling right now. Um, if it's a pressure reducing valve, um, not a pressure reducing valve, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, an excess flow valve, sorry about that. Um, if it's an excess flow valve you're, you're hitting, anything like that, you can feel the impact of the rod even a couple hundred feet away. 
So we've got the rod fully fed out into the pipe. Again, there's a tracer wire inside of the rod. On our reel, I'm just gonna reel a little bit of it in to keep it out of the way. I'm gonna tighten my wing nut back down so it doesn't swing out anywhere. There's a small knob on the end of the, uh, on the top of our cage here. The tracer wire that's inside of the rod is connected to that knob. So with our traditional locating equipment, you're gonna take your red lead just like you would for a tracer wire, direct connect onto it, run your ground out as you typically would, and turn your transmitter on. Now the tracer wire inside the rod is, is lit up with a locate signal that you can follow out to, to, uh, out to the main. Um, so very common and, and easy to use for tracing you know, unlocatable service lines. There are options for this as well to get it inside of a main. It's obviously a much more involved process, um, but it's as simple as, you know, with doing this setup, it's as simple as shutting off the gas, removing the meter, installing our stuffing box that holds back the pressure. Once everything is, is tightened together, we open the valve back up and we just snake the, the rod. Makes for a very easy locate.